Hello and welcome back. And today I want to talk about the subject of power consumption and NAS. It is a question, indeed a subject that has floated around the world of network attached storage since the very beginning and arguably a subject I have not really touched on enough on this channel. But right now, at the end of 2022, people do have concerns about power consumption, the amount of lolly it's actually costing us per kilowatt of power in our homes and businesses has arguably never been more expensive than it is right now and therefore if you are considering mo moving away from google drive and dropbox and such onto your very own private nas server i think now it's actually become a very pertinent point just how much these things are going to cost per day so this video is part one of a three-part series of videos talking about power consumption on nas i'm going to take three very distinct setups for desktop NAS solutions and in each video I'm going to be measuring just how much power they've used but also how that translates into actual money ideally per day but we'll work out a bit broader we're going to look at how much it costs in the UK the US parts of Europe and we'll try and cover as many regions as we can based on kind of the audience that you guys watch this I'm not going to go for really remote places where no one's actually going to watch this video but let's come let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this vid this is the Synology DS920 Plus. It's arguably one of the most popular solutions the brand has released in its disk station series over the years. Now, for the first video in this series, I wanted to focus on this one. One, because loads of people have got it. Two, because it's on offer everywhere at the moment. Um, but also because it ticks a lot of boxes for most users. And in terms of drive population, I have fully populated this device with WD Red. 4TB standard class drives. This is very much your basic bitch NAS setup. It is four 4TB drives in a Synology hybrid RAID there. So again, running there, and it's a quad core Celeron with four uh, gig of DDR4 memory. And in this setup, I've, I'm gonna be setting this device up. Don't worry, you haven't got a watch. You've seen me do it a million times. I'm gonna set the device up in that uh, configuration there. And during that time, it's going to be connected to this. This is a power monitor device here. And this is gonna be recording how much power in terms of kilowatts per hour or standard kilowatts it is consuming. This arrives, I believe, with a 90 watt external PSU, but that PSU is only there to give you a maximum amount uh, available to it. It's not always gonna be drawing full capacity of power via its uh, 90 watt PSU there. I'll bring that close to the camera that 90 watt PSU that it arrives with. We're looking at how much power it's actually realistically going to use. Now, how do we measure that? Because everyone's utilization of a NAS is different. What we're doing is I'm gonna set the device up. I'm not gonna include the whole of today, although I will show it on a chart. Then I'm gonna do 24 hours of sustained activity. I'm gonna run a very light VM, a single core one gig VM on this device. I'm also gonna be utilizing two cameras in Synology Surveillance Station 9 on this solution. And I'm gonna be running on a one hour schedule, smart SMART tests on every one of the drives in the system storage manager for 24 hours. That means the system is gonna be utilizing a few known processes. It's gonna be using some first party apps that won't let the system go into idle mode. And we're gonna be accessing the drives constantly to stop them spinning down into their own respective idle. Ultimately, it's gonna be 24 hours of what I believe to be sustained utilization of the system. Then I'm gonna do 24 hours of idle. I'm gonna disconnect the system from the network. I am going to delete or disable surveillance station. I'm gonna remove that VM. I'm gonna get rid of the smart test schedule. And for that 24 hour period, this system is gonna be idle. That is running and just waiting to do something. And in that period, we should see power consumption drop notably. Now, why am I doing this? Because most people that use a NAS can fall into two categories. One, you've got the user that watches their multimedia, backs up periodically, and ultimately uses it in a kind of hybrid home, semi-work fashion. Those users in a 24 hour period probably have active use for about two to four hours a day. And the rest of the time, with the exception of maybe cameras that are just sending footage if an alert happens, most of the time the NAS is in idle mode anyway. Then you've got business users who will be accessing the NAS 
24-7. They might be using it not to its fullest capacity, not pushing that me the CPU or the memory too hard, but these are users that might have live synchronization, uh, multiple backups, lots of cameras running all the time, not just sending uh, alerts to the box, and having team folders and multiple stage backup devices and backups to other systems all at once. So in order to kind of give you the best of both worlds, that's why we're running 24 hours of full active, 24 hours of full idle. We're not going to include the uh, recording uh, the power usage today during setup because that is going to be atypical though I will show it on the graph now at the end of this two and a half give or take day test cycle I'm going to go through the results with you and then show the height and the low point during active and idle and then translate that into prices per day uh, based on different tariffs there around the world. It's not going to be an exciting video, but for those of you that are wondering about buying an NAS and thinking about the old DOSH, this may be useful to you. So what I'm going to do now is get this NAS connected, and I'm going to leave, come back to you in about two and a half days with the results. I honestly have no idea what it's going to look like, but let's go ahead and go through the results for you in a matter of seconds, for me in days from now. Let's go. Okay, so here we are. We've got our results. The test took around about two to two and a half days, all told, all the way through. I will also highlight right now, as you can see, I'm not in the studio. I've had to record this outside of the bubble because there's just too much noise going on with a lot of the tests that I'm conducting at the moment. And it's just the best way to be able to talk to you guys through these results using a lot of screen capture stuff here. So again, for me, it's been a number of days since the last thing that you saw earlier on. We've got a bunch of results here for us to go through. And again, we will be looking at uh, results from the website SUSIT or SUSIT. And then from there, we'll be looking at UK energy consumption based on October 2022 stats there. So very, very high at the moment here in the UK. And we'll be comparing that with uh, the USA, uh, the average at February 2022. So again, these will be a little bit out of date there. But this is the best website I could find that would portray the, all of this information. And alongside that, we'll be looking at Germany, we'll be looking at, when it loads, Australia, and we're going to be looking at Canada there. Now, again, as reminded, this is the 920 we're using, and if you go to the official pages there, a lot of you may be keenly uh, highlighting that it's 100 watt PSU, but again, remember... You're not going to be using all of that. That is a maximum potential it can hit, but very rarely are you going to be utilizing that kind of oomph. And again, we are utilizing those WD Red Plus drives there as well, alongside, as mentioned in the links, uh, the power uh, uh, monitor that we're going to be utilizing. There's also an article that I'm going to come to later on in the video where I'm going to go through a lot of these results. Now, we can performed our tests. And as you can see, uh, we bring this screen here up. You can see right there that we had a couple of NASs running at that time. That's for another video coming up soon. But as for the Synology here and the drives we were utilizing, if we zoom out there, you're able to see that while we were doing all of our tests, we had those drives in that RAID configuration, as mentioned, all chugging along nicely. Alongside that, we also had a daily schedule running on those drives uh, all the way through, just so we could double check and make sure that those drives didn't fall asleep during our active 24 hours. Again, there is our SHR RAID configuration completed. We had a couple of cameras being added there to surveillance station, along with that one core, one, um, mem um, one gig of memory VM. And here were our results, as you can see there on screen. Now, it's going to be very important to get a bit of context here. <clears throat> That's 0 0.42 there. That was during the RAID initialization, the system setup, and ultimately we are not looking at this number. This was a less than 24 hour period, but also because it was during the setup, that is not atypical of utilization of one of these devices. Now, the 0 0.51 kilowatt utilization, that was when the system was in that full access. The two cameras, the VM, the hourly smart test, and ultimately not letting the system be able to go into idle for 24 hours. This represents a very peak number there for 4TB WD drives and the Synology 920 there, that mid-range NAS. Very few users are going to be hitting those kind of numbers unless they are running the system with a multitude of applications 24 hours. Uh, for 24 hours in a day. Now, as mentioned, the 0.18 was when we were running the system. And again, I'm sorry to be repetitious about this, but I want to make sure in case people skip forward, that was when we disabled the VMs, we disabled uh, the VM, we disabled the cameras, we disabled all of those smart tests, and we disconnected the LAN cable. So that was 0.18 uh, kilowatts utilization for a 24 hour period when the system was in 
idle. Even the lights of the LEDs on the front of the NAS disappeared there. So again, that is what we are looking at. Those are our stats. So why don't we convert those stats into prizes there? So we'll bring that there. So for the UK, uh, we can first, we're going to look at the utilization there of full 24 hour access. That was the 0 0.51 kilowatt utilization. But of course, we need it per hour so we can work out the daily rate. So for that, what we need to do is bring ourselves up a calculator. So first, we're going to have to calculate in there 0 0.51 kilowatts. We're then going to have to divide that by 24 hours there and that will give us 0.02125 now i know a lot of you are already going to say in the comments we don't need to include these calculations because of the stats here on screen i just want to show my numbers as i go and again doing a lot of research into the power consumption of these devices for these videos i accept that i'm by no means an expert on this so if you know a better way to do this or you can recommend another way for future videos please let me know in the comments but again this is our kilowatts per hour rating there that we can see 0 0.02125 so what we can do from there and we'll remove that calendar from the field of play uh, is we'll make our way back uh, and then from that, let's get rid of you, uh, minimize that there, that's what you get for not looking at what you're doing. And then from there, we'll start calculating this into uh, each of the regional calculators. So 0 0.02125, uh, and again, that's kilowatts. And we want to look at a daily period there. So again, it's working out 17.34 pence for the UK there. So 17 pence. Remember, that is full utilization there most users are not going to be running it at full so hold back your judgment until you see the idle utilization and again we're going to do exactly the same thing there for the us so for the us again showing our numbers live there we can see that that's working at 7.7 7 cents 55 per day we work out there for germany so this will work out in euro cents at one at 16 euro cents there if we work out in Australia, bring that up on there, kilowatts per hour, 24. We can see that is not right. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. It's working out 12 cents there in Australia. And finally, we can look at there for Canada or Canada, as someone said to me a while ago, and I thought they were having an absolute bad day, lost it time. But there we go. So it worked out for them 4.33 cents. Now, again, Bear in mind that the averages we're using from these sites, much like the Canadian ones, some of them are severely in need of updating for your own tariff. So if you go to sus.it, you can enter your tariff manually if you choose. But as you can see, we were looking at 4.33 cents Canadian. We're looking at 12.03 cents, so decimal place cents, I mean pointless in Australia for um, Australian dollar. Uh, as far as German uh, euro there, it was 16.28 euro cents. Uh, for the US, we are at 7.55 cents. Uh, and again, these are per day of full access, 17.34 pence in the UK there. But again, that is the most up-to-date statistic there. And I do know us in the UK right now are suffering something of an energy uh, price crisis right now. So now we know those figures. Why don't we look at idle? So for now, we are looking at when the device isn't used for 24 hours at all. Now, remember, most users are going to have very mixed periods with active being much, much shorter and prolonged periods of idle time. So it's important to get these numbers down. So this is 0 0.18. Let's bring our trusty calculator back. So 0 0.18. Once again, we're going to divide this by 24. And there we have 0 0.0075. So from there, we'll copy that along. And again, we're just going to repeat exactly what we did before. But this time, the stats, we won't have to change all of them because it will rem uh, remember what we did before. And this will be representative of a much lower consumption there. We're going to have to go back in there, aren't we? And then again, Australia, we can bring that up there. And finally, we can open up into Canada. I'm not used to using this laptop for these recordings. So as you can see, uh, when it comes to Canada, you're looking at one and a half cents, give or take there, which isn't exactly mind-blowing there for idle uh, over a 24-hour period there a day. Uh, in Australia, you're looking at 4.25 cents. Remember, this is not dollars. This is cents. Um, 
come out there if we make our way into uh, the German one 5.75 so five and three quarter um, euro, uh, euro cents there if we go into the US it's 2.66 cents there and finally in the UK and again the most up-to-date one there 6.12 pence so again UK users at the moment really hating our energy tariffs but again without more modern numbers there and I'd have to isolate individual energy providers to get any more accurate than that just use this as a guidance point for yourselves now what does that translate to into weeks, uh, months, years? Well, well, you're not going to have to watch me have to do all the statistics there because alongside all of these other bits, I'm working on an article here where I have already done the maths for uh, the cost per month and cost per year. I'm nowhere near finished writing this article, as you can see here, but I've already got the stats in place. So again, using the statistics that we've seen today we can work out these numbers you can see there that as far as uk is concerned in active use it's 63 pounds a year or 5.25 a month and again that is if the system was in full blown 24 hours access for 365 days or a month then again we did that by calculating that daily number timesing it by 365 and then dividing it by 12 to get the annual and monthly figures there and again it calculates down with the us at 27 dollars 55 per year and 2.29 dollars per month and 59 um german euros and 4.95 um, uh, German euros there are lots of currencies floating around in my head and again Australia uh, 43 90 Canadian dollars and three dollar 65 Australian per month and finally Canadian 15 80 Canadian dollars over one dollar 31 Canadian and then again maybe things have changed a lot with energy prices in Canada but right now you guys are absolutely nailing it and again I'm not going to go through the numbers you guys have got eyes but if we make our way there we can see that when it comes to the idle uh, activity that is if your NAS was idle for the course of an entire year those numbers are pretty small there so, uh, ranging from 22 pounds down to five dollars Canadian there and bear in mind again most NAS users the NAS is going to be idle significantly more times than it is active so ultimately using these stats we've got here and if you head to this article which I hope will be done in time for this video. Um, you'll be able to utilize these stats in order to work out how much it's gonna cost for you to run a NAS per day, per week, per month, per year. And hopefully Eddie will be working on a tool that will allow you to enter these figures and then spit out achievable results there based on different configurations and setups. Now, again, as mentioned in the intro, this is part one of a three part series of videos. We've still got the QNAP with 22 TB drives that we've already tested several days ago uh, while we had the drives in place so do stay tuned for that but other than that i hope you have found this video helpful i hope the article is live in time for this video because i'm sure a number of you that are concerned by this point will want to read it and go through the stats we'll be adding more nazis to that article as we go as we test some rack mount setups and again do put your requests below i'm not going to be able to do them all but if i see a certain configuration appearing more than others i will certainly test that setup there and again it will be utilized in the same system we're using today where the first day of initialization we do not count but we count 24 hours of full initialized full access usage and 24 hours of idle no use but this has been the DS920 with four 4TB WD Red drives in an SHR configuration. I hope you've enjoyed it. Click like if you have. Subscribe to learn more. Use the free advice section over at NAS Compares. And I will see you next time.